Good afternoon YouTube, it's the Orange Defender here and today I'm going to be replacing my bonnet release cable because it's snapped and for the past few weeks I've been using a bit of a bit of electrical wire just to open it and close it but that's been down at the front so I've been and bought a, a new cable today and um, well I'm going to fit it so let's go to the bonnet, open it up and find out where about this route so we can get a new one pulled through. Now as you can see my uh, current arrangement for opening up the bonnet is this bit of cable since it broke a few weeks ago so that's what I've been dealing with. As you can see my bonnet release cable is completely completely screwed um, and it passes down there through that little hole there's just a little locking nut there holding it into this clamp and um, so we'll undo that we'll pull it out first we'll go over to the bonnet and we'll disconnect it from the bonnet side. Now the current bonnet release cable comes down through here um, up along here so you can see it coming in through that hole my finger is up through here around underneath the uh, the coolant bottle down here just, just around there see it wobbling around and then through to where the bonnet release catches now it probably is possible if you're really skilled to disconnect the bonnet release cable here so that holds the outer sheath on and then down in there is a couple of grub screws which um, is where the cable passes through now if you're really skilled it probably is possible to sort it out without taking the grill off but I'm going to take the grill off uh, just to make it a lot easier for my access to get in there and also can get the camera in there so you can see exactly what we're doing to, to replace this now then the tools you're going to need for this are a um, a large fat head Phillips, Phillips bit. I'm going to use mine in my uh, impactor here. Well, it's basically a dual driver, but I'll be careful with it. Just to remove the front of the grill. A uh, decent pair of cutters to cut out the old cable and remove any cable ties holding it. Flathead screwdriver. Uh, there's a couple of little grub screws right at the very end of the cable. Uh, a pair of pump pliers just to get that locking nut off where the, uh, the cable comes through the bulkhead. And some black cable ties to secure the new cable in place and neaten up so it's not floating around the engine bay um, and of course don't forget your nice clean adult baby wipes clean up afterwards and get all that oil and grease off your hands before you start putting it all over your steering wheel so we've got our new bonnet release cable here I'm just going to make sure it is long enough because it's coiled up like this and it looks really short to me I'm not it probably is long enough I'm sure it is but that just look very short and when you, when you consider that in a Defender you think oh it's gonna be really long but that's what the uh, shop said that I need so uh, hopefully that's the right one I'm sure it will be now your front grill is held on by eight screws so there's one two three four, five, six, seven, and eight just in there. Mine aren't in at the bottom, and that's purely because this bull bar that I put on the front is in the way. So the last time I had to take it off, um, I just left the screws out because it was such a pain to get them out. And they're not um, there, they're not carrying any load apart from the, the front grill. And it's not flapping around in the wind or anything, so it's not gonna damage anything from me leaving them out. Now, I have made a bit of an error. Uh, when I fitted my light here, I passed the cable through the grill, so I've just dropped the screw down here just to make it a little bit looser because um, I'm not going to have to pull my grill out entirely, I'm just going to move it out of the way slightly and these slats here in my grill restrict my movement completely. So it's a bit annoying but uh, it's something to learn for the future, don't pass your cable through the grill on the front because you never know when you're going to need to take it off.
then the inner cable comes along here. There's a couple of small screws. We should attach it to another piece of. The other thing I will mention whilst we're here is that you are working in close proximity to your radiator and all these little fins here are very very delicate so whatever you do do not knock these because uh, when you bend them over uh, that's when it starts causing issues and if you get too many of them bent over uh, that's when it can start to overheat because you're really dissipating the heat as fast as all the air throwing through all those little tiny fins. I am however impressed with the amount of bugs I've got on here. I've only recently replaced this radiator and see we've got a dragonfly here, there's one or two wasps, a lot of flies, some little green thing. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot. I'm quite staggered by the amount there is. Okay, so I've disconnected the cable side of it uh, down here, which is where those two little grub screws were. Uh, it passes through the bonnet latch and then back into the little securing clamp. The outer sheath is held on by this little retaining clip here so to get this off always just push that off that way uh, use a pair of pliers or a screwdriver and it'll probably ping as you push it off right, be careful not to scratch your truck uh, thankfully I just didn't and then that will be sitting down in here and then you can pull it through and pull it out so now you get a better look at what was in there so you've got that re retaining clip, which goes onto the outer sheath, which is down here. Then this cable passes through your bonnet latch, back through, and then back into these two little grub screws here. And that secures it onto your bonnet latch. So mine has snapped somewhere along here. So if we pull it, it'll probably come out, which it's not doing right now. Once we get it out, we'll probably get a better look and find exactly where my cable failed. Inside the engine bay, um, mine is only secured with two uh, cable ties. Yours might be secured with more, but I've got one here, which is on the bracket for the power steering. And I've got another one down here, which is on the bracket for the coolant tank. So I'm gonna cut them out. Once I cut them out, I'll go into the cab in the front, undo that locking nut, and I'll pull the cable all the way through. So it's that time to clean my hands. I'm going into the bonnet, into the cab, I mean, and uh, I want to get grease, I'm covered in grease. The bonnet latch was smothered in grease. So, just cleaning my hands off before I go into the, into the cab and pull this cable through. I'm just gonna give it a quick wipe as well. Just get any muck off the cable because that's been sitting in the engine bay for quite a few years. Now, I would cut it, but I want to find out exactly where mine failed because uh, the cable's not pulling through and I suspect it might actually be at the handle side, um, inside the cab where it failed. But we'll see. I've loosened this off a bit now. Uh, the pump pliers didn't fit in there at all. So I ended up using a, a spanner on it. Um, and now I just need to pull it out. So it just slides straight out. You can see the lock nut there and the washer that it sits against in the front of it. And I can pull my cable all the way through. fit a new one it is just the reverse of the uh, taking out cable so on the first I'm going to put a little bit of this cable through just up to the outer sheath then I'm going to go to the bonnet side and put it through until it stops so we're on the uh, on the engine side we come through our firewall here's the new cable here I'm just going to pull that straight through, right up until it stops. Then I go back through to the other side and fit the fit the release handle onto that clamp on the inside. So here we go. Here's our uh, new handle, which is going to go into that clamp up there. Right, it's going to sit nicely into there. Make sure you get the washer completely on the other side. Then we can do up our retaining nut on the inside here. So I'll nip that up with the spanner in a second. Make sure you get that straight before you nip it up because it does only go one way around. So I'm just gonna finger tight for now and I'll tighten it back up with the spanner in, in a moment.
I threaded it all through the engine bay and I've secured it with cable ties. Now, I just have to fit this retaining clip here. So that's going to push onto the cable this way. I'm going to thread it through onto the cable like this. So if I, when it comes down to the end of the cable, you will need to force it on because you see it clamps down there and that little triangle piece there. That just pinches the outer sheath here, there's metal in that sheath. Um, so you will need to force that down and then that goes up and inside and slides onto this bit here and clamps on. Then this piece here is where your the workings of the cable, the inner cable here, that will pass through the bonnet release catch, which is just there. Now I've got on mine a, uh, a piece of yellow and green uh, earthing sleeve there, it's electrical sleeve. That's just to help prolong the life of this cable here. It doesn't have to be on, there might have been something on before, I'm not sure if there was when it came out of the factory, but um, I'm going to put that on just so that in the future this cable isn't just hanging like that and rubbing against metal, there's something in there just to not abrade it as much as what it would be. So your cable's just going to go through the loop on the bonus release catch, come back onto here, and then this is going to clamp down onto both pieces. So we'll get that fitted, and uh, we'll come back. Okay, so we've got the new bonnet cable fitted. Um, I'm just going to get this grill out of the way, drop the bonnet, test it out, make sure it's all working, and we can put everything back together. Well, I say everything. Put this drill back on, and um, then we'll be done. We'll be dusted. So, uh, yeah, let's get on with it. Now for the moment of truth. Excellent. Well that works. So we'll screw the screw back on and uh, tidy up, get packed up and it'll be just finished. So we're all packed up, just got the bonnets closed down now, and I was just inspecting the old cable. The old cable is still actually attached, and the wire in it is, is still good. But if you look here, along the sheath, uh, I don't know if you see on there, just there, you see the crack in it. So as you pull it, it didn't actually pull the cable, it pulled the outer sheath up here, which is why when it's hanging out like that, um, I thought it wasn't working. But if I just pulled it a bit more, it would have operated the bonnet. Um, so, yeah, it needs replacing. Uh, that crack is all the way along there. Uh, that is ruined. But um, yeah, the cable inside is actually okay. So now, just while I clean my hands here, um, just want to say thank you for watching. And hopefully now that will help you if you need to replace your bonnet release cable. I'm not sure how to do it. I'd never done it before and you saw how easy it was. Um, the only one thing that I didn't say whilst recording it was that the screws for the front grill, uh, the screws are fine to use again obviously, but the little plastic pieces that the screws go into, really you should replace them. They are kind of a one-time use, um, but I've never had an issue with it. I've taken it off 10, 12 times to do various jobs and absolutely fine. But if you do over tighten them, you will, they are only plastic, so you will thread them and then they'll, the screws will just fall out, so they will be completely useless. So be careful as you're taking them off, unless you've got the replacements, in which case, rip them out. So thanks for watching, please subscribe and hopefully come back to see more of my videos.